Catherine, Princess of Wales, says she has cancer. Mass shooting at concert hall in Moscow. Neuralink shows paralyzed person playing chess on laptop. Apple faces years of distractions after DOJ antitrust suit. Inventor of first karaoke machine Shigeichi Negishi dies aged 100. Former Disney CEO Bob Chappick breaks silence. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funny News. It's Monday, March 25th, and here are your top stories. Catherine, Princess of Wales, revealed Friday that she has been diagnosed with cancer and is in the early stages of treatment. Before revealing her diagnosis, she had been mostly absent from the public eye since undergoing abdominal surgery in January. Kate's health and whereabouts became the subject of frenzy speculation, despite the playlist reiterating that it had made clear in January the timelines of the princess recovery and that the public should not expect to see her until after Easter. On Mother's Day, which was celebrated on March 10th in the UK, Kate published an official photograph of her and her three children in what appeared to be an attempt to end the rumors. But instead of ending the speculation, it fueled it instead. Members of the public swiftly noticed several irregularities in the image. After a day of more amateur sleuthing, Kate admitted that she had edited the photograph and apologized. Multiple global news agencies recalled the image from circulation hours later, citing manipulation concerns. The Princess of Wales announced Friday she has been diagnosed with cancer and is in the early stages of chemotherapy treatment. The princess described her diagnosis as a huge shock in a video statement at Windsor on Wednesday. Russian authorities said a group of armed men opened fire at a concert hall in a Moscow suburb on Friday night, killing at least 60 people and injuring 145 others, marking one of the deadliest such attacks in Russia in recent decades. According to a state media reporter who was at the concert hall during the time of the attack, a grenade or an incendiary bomb was thrown after the shooting broke out and caused a fire. Footage published by the state-run TASS news agency showed a large fire at a Krakow City Hall, which is located around 16 kilometers northwest of the center of Moscow. According to a post on its Telegram channel, the Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the attack later on Friday. The Moscow region branch of Russia's health ministry said Saturday morning that three children were among those killed in the attack. A video shared online showed at least two masked men entering the Crocus City Hall, with one repeatedly firing shots from what appeared to be an assault rifle. Another graphic video showed four men, with at least three carrying weapons, chasing a group of people and firing at them point blank. Shortly following initial news reports of the shooting, Moscow Region Governor Andrei Vorobyovsetti had arrived at the scene and was leading response efforts to the incident. The state-run RIA Novosti news agency reported that Russian Interior Minister Vladimir Kolokoltsev also arrived at the scene. Elon Musk's brain science startup Neuralink offered a peek Wednesday into how a quadriplegic person is using its brain implant to control a computer. Neuralink released a nine-minute video in which its first human patient, who is paralyzed below his shoulders, appears to move a cursor across a laptop screen with nothing but his thoughts. The video shows him playing chess and turning off the laptop's music. The patient, who had not been previously identified, said in a Wednesday's video that his name was Nolan Abro. He said that he's 29 years old and that he lost all movement and sensation in his arms and legs after a diving accident about eight years ago. Arba said he was a satisfied patient so far after having previously relied on a mouth stick for certain tasks. No external devices or wires were visible in the video. The video makes Neuralink one of at least three companies to have released evidence of a functioning brain implant. The two others, BlackRock Neurotech and Synchron, both have years-long head starts on Neuralink. Each of the three companies has a different approach, and other startups are rushing into the field. Neuralink released its video on Musk's X platform about two months after Musk announced that the company had implanted a device in a human for the first time.
The U.S. Department of Justice sued Apple on Thursday, accusing it of using the iPhone's market power to cut off rivals, kicking off a multi-year process involving hundreds of lawyers and threatening Apple's walled garden business model. If the DOJ wins, it could seek a range of changes to Apple's business, and U.S. officials didn't rule out the possibility that Apple could face structural remedies or be broken up. If Apple's arguments prevail, a court could rule that its estimated 64% of U.S. smartphone share isn't a monopoly or that its conduct wasn't illegal, giving Apple new tools to fight off future regulation. But before any of that happens, we'll likely see years of legal wrangling, during which Apple will be forced to defend its business in public, distract its executives with legal meetings, produce internal documents for the government, and potentially face bad headlines that could hurt its brand or image. The DOJ's lawsuit still needs to be assigned to a judge. In the short term, Apple could ask for a change of trial location away from New Jersey, and it will likely ask to dismiss the case entirely. Director of the Competition Law Center at George Washington University William Kovacic said, All these steps take varying amounts of time, and it's realistic the trial will be scheduled for 2025, and the appeal won't wrap up until 2027, depending on which judge is assigned the case. Shigichi Nigishi, the entrepreneur who invented the world's first karaoke machine, has died age 100. Nigishi, whose 1967 Sparkle Box prototype is among several devices credited with ushering in Japan's karaoke craze, died from natural causes in January. Born in 1923, Nigishi founded and ran a company that assembled car stereos for automobile manufacturers in northern Tokyo, a regular listener to a sing-along radio show broadcast in Japan at the time. He hooked a spare tape deck up to a microphone and mixing circuit so he could hear himself singing over music. Marketing the device as a Sparko box, he sold them alongside lyrics cards and reportedly produced and installed around 8,000 around Japan, mainly at bars and restaurants. By the time Negishi stopped selling the products in the 1970s, several rival machines had been invented and taken to market. The industry body does not credit a single person with inventing karaoke, which literally translates as empty orchestra but instead recognizes several people who independently created machines in the late 1960s and early 1970s. According to estimates from the All Japan Karaoke Industrialist Association, today Japan is home to more than 8,000 dedicated karaoke box venues, while 131,500 bars are equipped with karaoke machines, a market worth a combined 387.9 billion yen, $2.6 billion, in 2022. In his first public comments since Disney fired him as CEO in November 2022, Bob Chepek told CNBC he sees no reason for Disney-owned ESPN to add minority partners. Disney CEO Bob Iger told CNBC's David Faber in July that he would consider selling a minority stake in ESPN to strengthen the sports network's content or technology as it plans a new direct-to-consumer offering, which he later said would launch by fall 2025. The company hasn't yet announced a deal to sell a stake in ESPN. Disney owns 80% of ESPN and Hearst owns the other 20%, a structure that's been in place since 1996. Iger said during Disney August quarterly earnings call that by searching for a partner, Disney wants to enhance the content, distribution and marketing of the direct-to-consumer ESPN, which hasn't yet been priced. Striking a partnership with one of the professional sports leagues could help secure future live rights, though it may irritate other media companies that bid against Disney for packages of games. Bringing on a technology or telecommunications company such as Verizon or Apple could give ESPN broader distribution options by reaching larger customer bases. Still, it's unclear that selling equity in ESPN is needed to strike an arrangement. The answer for last Friday was A. Disposable. Last but not least, we can reduce the use of paper, such as avoid using disposable paper goods. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of Catherine, Princess of Wales says she has cancer. Number one. Abdominal, Fubuda. She was advised to have an abdominal x ray. Number two, reiterate, Fan Fu de Short Chongshen. Let me reiterate that we are fully committed to this policy. Number three, speculation, Tui Te, Tai Te, Yi Te. There was widespread speculation that she was going to resign. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. 
And that's for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune into Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.